This is how I configure purchase event using the newer customer pixel section for Shopify store owners using Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics. The first thing we have to do is to make sure that the data layer event is properly firing on our Shopify store. To do that, all we have to do is to make sure that the customer pixel event sections are properly configured. Let's go to the settings on our Shopify store, which is on the bottom left corner and then scroll down all the way to the customer event sections. Once you're on the customer event section, you will see a button on the top right corner which says add pixels. Let's rename this to purchase and data layer. Since this one will be responsible for creating the data layer for the purchase event. Click on add pixel and this will add the pixel right here. Now these settings are really important. So make sure that the permissions are set to not required and data sales is also set to the last option which is the data sale is does not qualify. At the bottom of this video, you will find a link where you can get the core snippet that we are going to paste right here. Once you have pasted the code, it will look something like this. The only thing we have to update here is the Google Tag Manager container ID. And you can get the Google Tag Manager container ID from your GTM container. So let's go to tagmanager.google.com and click on the container ID on the top. Let's select this parameter and go back to our Shopify store to replace it with triple X and paste it right here. Now we can click on save changes and the pixel will be saved. There is one more step before we move into the Google Tag Manager container setting. And that is connecting this pixel with our Shopify backend. Scroll all the way to the top and then click on the connect button and hit connect one more. This will connect the data layer from the web pixel directly with the back end of our Shopify. So when we are going to make a purchase, we will be able to see that data layer. Let's cross this page out. And before moving to the GA4 configuration tag, let's just test if everything is working all right. So let's go to our store by clicking on view online store and then add any of the products in our cart. Instead of adding it, I'm directly going to click on buy it now. Let me add some details here like test as tested.com. Let's fill out some more test information for first name, last name, address, apartment, city, and postal code. Since this is a development store, I have the ability to use a demo account. So I'm going to use a bogus card for payment. And let's click on pay now. As soon as we will hit pay now, there will be a data layer event generated in the console. To view the data layer event, right click on the page and then click on inspect. Once you will click on inspect, you can switch to this tab, which is for console events. So let's go to console. And you can see that we have a purchase event fired right here. It also has an e-commerce object which contains coupon, currency, items array, and all the details of the items that were purchased along with shipping, tax, transaction ID, and value. Perfect. Now we can move on to the Google Tag Manager container setup to add a configuration tag and then create a purchase event tag. The first thing we have to do is add a configuration tag which will track the page view event. So let's click on new. And since the configuration tag has to fire on all the pages of the website, let's click on all pages. For the configuration tag, let's select Google tag. And the only thing we require here is the measurement ID. To get the measurement ID, we can go back to our Google Analytics account and then search for the measurement ID on the top. Let's copy the measurement ID, go back to the Google tag manager container and paste the ID right here. Let's rename this tag as GA4 configuration tag and hit save changes. Perfect. The next step is to making sure that the purchase event is properly firing. So let's create a tag for the purchase event. For the triggers of the purchase event, we don't want it to fire on all the pages of the website. We only want it to fire when the data layer event for the purchase has been triggered inside the checkout pages. So let's click on new to create a new event. Let's scroll down to the custom event section and name this event as purchase because this is what we are calling it on our checkout pages. You can see that the event name is purchase right here. So let's rename this trigger as custom event purchase and save it. The next thing we have to do is to configure the tag. For the tag, let's select Google Analytics event tag and we can get the measurement ID from the Google Analytics account again and paste it in the GA4 tag. The event name is going to be purchase, everything lowercase. And the only thing we have to do is go under more and then e-commerce select send e-commerce data and set it to data layer. Perfect. Now let's rename this tag to GA4 custom event purchase and hit save changes. Doing this should automatically track the purchase event. However, we won't be able to test it using the preview event. So we have to submit the changes. So let's publish the changes inside our Google Tag Manager container. Let's rename this version as Tracking Academy GA4 purchase event and hit continue. Now this should have successfully added the purchase event on our Shopify store. But before getting too excited, let's just confirm if everything is working all right. Let's click on view online store and add another product to the cart so we can do a test. Let's go to any of the product pages and click on buy it now because we don't have to do add to cart event right here. Once we are on this page, what I'm going to do is activate my adverse extension, which will help me see the GA4 events right inside my console tab. Once I have activated the Chrome extension, I'm going to inspect the page again 
and go to the console tab. Great. On the console, we can already see that the GA4 page view event has fired and a scroll event has also fired, which is a built in automatic event. So let's just try to do a purchase right here. Let's use test as first name, last name, address, city and postal code. And for the bogus card, I'm going to just use any random card. And let's click on pay now. As soon as I will click pay now, the Shopify is going to process my order. And then we can see that a purchase event has been triggered inside the data layer. It has also triggered an event for the purchase event on Google Analytics. And we can see that it has all the details about the product, value, transaction ID, tax, shipping, coupon, as well as the currency parameter right here on the top. Great, we have successfully tracked purchase event on our Shopify store using the newer customer web pixel event. If you want to see how to track ad payment info event, click right here.